uh, Skeet Ulrich and Corey Stoll were wonderful to me. Uh, the director, Tom DiCillo, directed the independent film Living in Oblivion, which is a lot of people's favorite film about filmmaking. And he was just efficient and kind and gave great direction, wasn't uh, pushy, knew how to like draw us all out, gave everybody their time. The two, co the two leads were incredibly generous. All of my close-ups and takes, they were absolutely in character. They didn't just, you know, say the lines to give me the lines. People on set were nice, you know, complimenting, you know, saying nice things like, you have a lovely smile, which is nice, you know, you're an actor, you want to hear nice things. <laughs> it's about a man who wants to be a filmmaker but is relegated to doing, making commercials, which he hates doing, and his life just starts to unravel because he's so unfulfilled. And um, his best friend, who he was in, they never say what it is, but I think it was the Nicaraguan Civil War together, is dying of cancer and leaves his son, our protagonist's godson, to him to raise. So he has to go from being this self-centered person who's not creatively fulfilled, who you know, used to do great things like work for the, you know, fight for the people and is now just in the commercialist, commercial world. He has to take care of a kid and raise the kid and focus on the kid. And it, it's a sort of a coming of man in, to true manhood story because he's like 40 something but he becomes a real grown-up i'm i bookend the movie i'm at the beginning trying to get my husband who's a businessman to finance the protagonist's uh, feature film but my husband's like i don't want to do it and at the end i'm separated from my husband and i've always wanted kids and i we run into each other in the park and i see he has a kid now and i just say we have a little conversation at the end i say call me i'm a i get to play a guatemalan which i am and um, she uh, wanted to be a, fa a professional singer. And a wonderful actress named Eddie Ganem plays that role uh, as a young woman in Guatemala. But the Civil War is so terrible that it becomes too dangerous to live there anymore. So she and her best friend migrate to the US, where, of course, they can only get work as maids. So cut to 20, somewhere between 20 and 25 years later, and she's bitter. My character is not happy because she has spent her whole life not being an entertainer, singer, performer, being a maid. And my daughter is now grown and she's attending medical school and she's thinking of maybe quitting or taking time off for medical school and it's, we have this very contentious relationship. We love each other, but it's just, because I sacrificed everything, I think everyone should be willing to make the ultimate sacrifice for what they want. And she's had an easier life, so she doesn't see things quite that way. <laughs> and she also sees other options. She's grown up in the USA. There's other options, which I can't see because I didn't have them. So we have this tough relationship, and um, I have a big blow-up fight with my best friend because I'm so angry about my life. And my best friend's like, I am done with you. All you ever do is complain. You have a beautiful, brilliant daughter. You know, get a grip. She's got blinders she's like because, of her bitterness. because of her bitterness. And then she, because of her best friend finally telling her the absolute truth about herself, it forces her to sort of wake up and open up and realize there are options. You love to sing? Go sing somewhere. I, I, I have a full script that I am happy with. I am now fundraising for the show um, uh, through USA Projects. And I intend to put it up next year, sometime between February and May, depending on scheduling, whether or not I book something before then, you never know, because um, I don't want to set it in stone right now until ra funds are raised. But it's about growing up in six different countries and being of mixed heritage and being a dual citizen and just all the kind of upheaval of my life and the challenges and the wonderful things that came along with that. I, I hope that a lot of TCKs or third culture kids who grew up internationally as well as domestic nomads, people who grew up, you know, people who moved a lot will come see it because we never get to see our stories. And it's such a specific, unique, and impacting experience. So I hope for them to just feel validated, for them to just be like, yes, <gasps> it's my story, it's similar, it's not, you know, I don't have to conform to this other person's story. It's mine. So I got published again. I wrote an essay about producing Three Sisters, Chekhov's Three Sisters, in which the siblings were all Hapa, people of uh, mixed heritage and partially Asian descent. And I've got the podcast, yes, called Hapa Happy Hour. Yeah. So this new essay is at Asian American Literature, Discourses and Pedagogies. But it's not, my essay's not that academic, and it's uh, online. So I'm very proud.